Hello and welcome everyone to today's podcast on how to build a kick-ass offshore team. Today we're joined with Phil Whitman, Sean Parikh, David Wolfskull, and we'd like to get going on this conversation. Before we do that, I'd like each of you to go ahead and introduce yourself real quickly, starting with Phil. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mike Goosen. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm Phil Whitman, uh, President and CEO of Whitman Business Advisors, where we're helping make public accounting a better place for the people in it. We help CPA firms grow. We've got our six pack plus of strategy. And if there's a question you've got, if I can't answer it, David can, or someone we know is there to help you. David? I'm I'm a senior managing director. And one of the things I spend a lot of time on is helping firms figure out if they're sustainable for the future, and if not, what they need to do to become so. So this is a really exciting topic for me. Sean? Hi, everyone. This is uh, Sean Parikh. And uh, those who are uh, coming for the podcast, I mean, watching the podcast for the first time, uh, uh, I'm from Integrity Offshore Staffing. And, uh, you know, uh, talking at this time, you know, where, where you know, world is under a big pandemic uh, uh, you can't really talk about any kind of opportunities you empathize with the situation of people but but you know uh, as the chinese definition of crisis is crises are basically an opportunity riding dangerous winds so so uh, we are all here to you know talk about today uh, the sustainability part of of accounting and you know our business suddenly has become so more relevant today you know, with remote working, gaining so much traction. So uh, offshore staffing was perceived differently by many people. Today uh, is, is, is kind of, you know, every accounting firm in America, uh, you know, has to look at it not as an option, but rather something that they have to do if they want to go ahead and kind of expand or survive in this new normal. Having said that, I'm Sean Parikh from Integrity Offshore Staffing. Mike, thank you. Thank you for hosting this podcast today. Sure. Yeah. And, and actually, that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about, you know, is your firm sustainable in the future? And with all the uncertainties that seem to be coming upon us without any um, anyone able to see them coming, things are going to be different. And the idea of sustainability for a, for a CPA firm is a big question right now. Um, uh, with the, with that, yeah, we were talking earlier how some firms with the, now we have the social distancing and work from home has really thrown them into a bit of a, a confusion. Others, I was talking to a friend of mine recently just yesterday and they're doing okay. They figured it out. So, so with that going on, you know, Phil, what's kind of, what do you think about the sustainability topic and how would you lead that discussion? Sure. I, I just like to take 15 seconds to say, you know, whoever's on listening to this, whoever your God is, God bless you and your families, that you should stay healthy and this coronavirus should pass and uh, business resume in some sort of new normal. So sustainability has been a question that we've been asking about CPA firms and not just in light of the current health crisis, okay? There was, coming changes that were really impacting the profession. Artificial intelligence, blockchains, you know, it, the, the world has become a much flatter place and many more competitors coming in. So we would ask firms, you know, are you sustainable into the future? Can you remain viable? I'd like to share a story. We get a call from a $10 million CPA firm, okay? And they're at the crossroad. Do we merge up? Can we remain independent and sustainable? Can we take our $10 million firm and grow it to 15, 20, 30, 50? Or do we need to merge up? So one of the things that we did, we as a team at Whitman Business Advisors, we said, we're gonna help you. We're gonna look at things like your human resources, your IT, you know, your bench strength. You know, do you have future partners? We're gonna look at the business model that you have now 
and help you decipher whether or not you can transform it into what people have been calling for years, the firm of the future. So we're going to talk a little bit about the firm of our future and the future is today. It's here. It's not two to three years out. And perhaps this coronavirus, you know, which is a curse, it's, it's global, it's nationwide, it's changing the way we do things. And perhaps when all settles and everything is calm, the CPA firms out there are going to look at the way they've done things and know that the world is flat and they certainly can do things differently. So one of the things, go ahead, Sean. Yeah. So first, uh, Phil, what, what you say is what you're saying completely makes sense, but I would like to highlight one thing. I mean, first of all, you know, this is a, a, you know, not a great time. It's a bad time for people. And I hope families remain safe. All family members remain safe and uh, people around, you know, uh, in this situation passes and, and people come out of it, uh, you know, uh, as normal as we can as, as a globe. Uh, although I, I, I'm sure it will not remain the way it is anymore. Uh, <clears throat> a few things I want to highlight here when you were talking about firms, you know, uh, you know, we talk about this change all the time, Phil, you, me, David, Mike, we've done so many videos. We do all this, but you know, we have, I also meet a lot of accounting firms similar to the firms that you meet, Phil. And you know, older partner says, you know, I'm in my fifties and I'm in my 60, 60. I'm in my fifties and I'm in my sixties. And you know, whatever change is going to happen, it's not going to impact in my lifetime. So that mindset is going to change with Corona coming in. Because now, so, that, yeah, sure, go ahead. David. So Sean, I think that mindset, especially over the last 18 months to two years, <clears throat> you know, and certainly for people in the fifties, I think that mindset is already starting to shift, that people are seeing that business isn't going to be normal. And I think that was occurring before this crisis. You know, again, there's certainly people who might be in their 60s who are trying to just get through the next couple of years. But I think that for many people, the mindset has started to shift, although not necessarily the actions that need to be taken have been started to be taken. So, and, David, and, and David one you're, more thing. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead, Phil. I was going to say, David, you're absolutely right. You know, one of the things my big concern I have is if we look back at 2008, and it, obviously it wasn't a health crisis, and, but the markets tanked, and the markets have tanked again. And the concern is with people down 25 and 30 percent, and some even more in their portfolios. My concern is we're going to have a lot of those people that were saying, I'm ready, I need to merge up, I need to start my succession and transition, you know, or maybe they have a young person that they were going to transition to, that they're now going to say, I need to work a couple more years because I can't retire. Yeah, okay? I mean, and we, and we yeah. know that we, we know that that's going to happen in, in many cases, which is going to limit the new partner possibility. So, I mean, firms that don't have mandatory retirement, you know, this is probably further going to cause some of those younger people that we have in our trenches, the pipeline of future partners to question whether or not they're ever going to have a chance to take over. They'll either go out on their own or go with private. But I think what we're going to do is further create, further exacerbate the staffing crisis that we're already in. So I think it's a wonderful thing. Hopefully firms have figured out how to work virtually. Maybe they're going to say, do I need to have 40,000 square feet in Manhattan that I'm paying 80 to $100 a square foot? Maybe people can work at home. And if they can and they're doing it right, why not look to uh, an organization like an integrity to offshore some of this, you're going to be, your realization is going to be hit because of what's going on. People are not as productive. Okay. You're paying them. Okay. People are yeah. getting paid and the, the, hopefully the production is, is going to continue, but obviously in a very different way. And I think with taking a, a, a hit on realization, 
I think looking at that offshore staffing at a much lower uh, uh, cost uh, can help you get back some of that um, realization that you're losing due to this epidemic or pandemic. David, why don't you do this? Y you know, go ahead, Sean. Yeah. So, uh, Phil, thank uh, Phil. I have a very different viewpoint on this. See, uh, first of all, we we cannot just look at. I mean, I don't look at it from just staffing standpoint or this. Step. I mean, accounting industry as a whole, and you know that we also operate a business called MyCPE, which hosts online uh, webinars and videos for doing, you know, taking your CPE credits. Uh, well. Uh, we are talking to many speakers, educators, you know, in accounting industry. And, you know, their main source, source of revenue, let me, I mean, I don't want to name anyone right now. That's not right. But their main source of revenue is speaking at live events, is speaking at seminars. Is this going to remain the same now? Big question. No. Very big question. I know for the fact that many speakers, educators don't want to look at webinars because they're making wonderful money through live events. They're paying handsome amount. And they say that, you know, web, you know online events, I, I mean, they have never looked upon it as, as a business opportunity. And, and I mean, I was uh, listening to Joe Pulisi, one of the great, you know, content marketer. Uh, and he mentioned to me that his main source of revenue is personal consulting to firms on content marketing and speaking at live events. I mean, uh, accounting industry has got the highest number of accounting conferences because of the CPE requirements. Every state society has about four or five or seven or maybe more conferences. So there is this host of 250, 300 or maybe 500 live events happening every, every year. First, the big dent is going to be on the attendance. So it was already hitting the attendance. The reason online companies like MyCP, unfortunately, I have to say that, but are, we're, we're kind of taking away a lot of, uh, you know, people f away from CP. And that's where, that's where AccountEx US got closed. AccountEx US has actually closed their operations this year because last year, a lot many exhibitors complained and attendance was so, so low. And now with this event, I personally feel that there are two kinds of business. One, which is on the right side of this event. One, which is on the wrong side of this event. And the one which is on the wrong side of, of this event will have to, will have a permanent damage. To what extent? I don't know. But definitely there is going to be a little damage if they don't come onto the right side of the business. So, so Sean, you know, really what you're talking about when we talk about sustainability of CPA firms, I think this current crisis really is going to test the sustainability of many organizations and companies regardless what they do. But, you know, one of the things that we did at Whitman Business Advisors, you know, we created something that we call a sustainability study. And David, why don't you talk about that a little bit and how we survey the staff and parachute in and the steps that we take. Right, so Whitman Business Advisors, we have a team of 14 uh, consultants, many of whom have been long-term industry insiders. So we have a former HR uh, partner at a top 10 firm, a marketing person from a significant firm as well. And so we bring multiple people with multiple depth of expertise to a firm really give valuation and we get things like do they have a bench right are they using it properly you know or they have that mindset of the 21st century that the world's flat and it's not just about my local community do they have a business development plan or is the one founder who might be looking to retire is he the person who's brought in all the business for the firm and we go in there and we look, and oftentimes what's really funny is we don't really tell anybody, any leadership, anything that they don't know, right? But it's easy to kind of push off and say, yeah, we don't have a great bench, but that's okay. Or we don't have a great process. But when we deliver this report as one package, right, it really drives those leaderships to not be able to hide anymore, 
not be able to look at each thing individually and justify it. Because when you're looking at that entire package, you know, it's much more difficult. So we believe that firms that are going to be sustainable in the future are going to have to be flexible. And I think that, you know, Sean, you were talking about mindset before. So flexible as far as what do, what's our business model and are we a CPA firm that provides accounting or are we a small business firm that, advise, that helps our clients be successful, right? You know, from a staffing point of view, do we put an ad in the local paper, which may not exist anymore, or do we look at a worldwide solution for staffing? And so we really believe that it starts with the business model. It starts with the mindset to allow these firms to remain independent. Sean, so, you had a comment. Oh, so before Sean jumps in, so, so imagine this. You're the managing partner of a firm, and you're up at the top, okay? There's something called the iceberg of ignorance. So if you think about the Titanic, there was this little thing above the water, but it wasn't that that it collided with that killed it, uh, you know, and made it sink. It was everything that was below the water. And there are things as managing partner or partners on an executive committee that you think that you know, that you create the story, you create the ending. So one of the things we did with one firm uh, well, we always do it, but with this firm, we deploy a employee survey because we don't want to just talk to the partners about the sustainability. We want to get in with the people that are, you know, that bigger part of the iceberg. Because if you really want to know what's going on in an organization, it's not talking to the people at the top. It's talking to the people in the trenches. They know where you are. They know when you're golfing, when you're at a doctor's appointment. So one of the staff, and we asked for comments, said, we ask a very important question. Would you recommend a friend to work at your firm? Okay. And that is a very telling question. And one of the responses was, was why would I have a friend work here when partners are running around like chickens without heads, bringing in new business, and the expectation of our staff which is already overwhelmed to bang out additional work that we just don't have the capacity for. So when we sat down and we met with the partner group and we told them about this comment, the initial thing we heard from the managing partner was, who is that guy? I want to fire him. And you know what David said? What did you say, David? I said, here's a person who cares, right? And the, this who said the comment is much less important than the comment and the action that you're taking. But in so many firms, people don't care, right? That was a comment of, I care, I want to make things better. So, and we know that people vote with their feet. And every day when they wake up in the morning, they decide, am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? And in today's environment, it's not like I'm going to decide to commute to work and get in an elevator and get off and do what I do. Today, they're waking up, they're walking to their home office, and you better believe that every recruiting firm out there right now feels that they have an opportunity to connect with your people, okay? Because they're at home, they don't need to close a door, they're not sitting in a cubicle, they don't have someone next to them. I think that our profession is in for hysteria in recruiting and retaining people. And I think, you know, uh, yeah, I will share this. My son works for a very large CPA firm. And these firms, you know, a buddy works at another firm and they're sharing the emails that are coming out from management of the firms. And, you know, one firm is saying, hey, you know, due to this coronavirus, you know, we're going to give everyone an extra $50 a week of expense money so that you can buy extra food and do what you want to do. As a matter of fact, we have team members in the Philippines. We sent them extra money so that they could stock up because they probably have a bit more than we do here. So the question that I throw out to you, because sustainability, it's all about the people. Yes, it's about your clients. And you will lose clients because businesses will close happy employees, happy clients. Make sure you're taking care of them today. Sean, it looked like you had a comment. <laughs> well, um, no, I, uh, I would like to hear from Mike. Mike, what do you have to say? Mike, what do I have to say? 
I'm the host. Yeah. I'm listening. I'm I'm engaging <laughs> with you guys here. No, we'd like to. Uh, I mean, you have spent so many years in the industry, and you've watched it from inside and outside. So I'm sure you might have some views on it. Maybe not as as aggressive as me and Phil have, but maybe some some probably. Well, one thing that uh, uh, Phil said is is very true in what uh, I experienced both in the industry and in private business is forgetting who really is necessary for your business to succeed, and that is the people. The the people first comment or the direction of, you know, how do I take care of my staff and my 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 employees in a way that will create the longevity to become a what we refer to as a an employer of choice and making so that our people don't leave us for the first five percent raise opportunity or they don't they, you know jump out because um, they they feel not appreciated as much as they could elsewhere because the grass is always greener and so when we when people are in, in times like this it's very important to stay connected to your team stay connected to your staff so that you can um, once we get over this hump and get things back to a little bit more normal, you're right, Phil, and people are checking. They're, they're going to be distracted towards some other opportunities possibly. And with the tight, tight staff labor market we have in the CPA in the industry right now, this is, it's a, it's an important time. So those who might be listening to us, make sure they're paying close attention, not only to their own family, but to their business family <laughs> and make sure that they're going to still be there when things settle down, otherwise you might be uh, really in trouble for some staffing. So yeah, that, that kind of came to my mind as I was listening to you guys and you're making a real good point. So, so Mike, a, a point there is, you know, for you managing partners or people that are like responsible, you know, obviously having your people put in their time so that you could send out invoices is critical. But you know, when you want someone to put in their time, you know, make sure you, you say, hey, hope all is well and you're healthy and your family just want to remind you the deadline is, you know, Friday at 5 PM or Monday morning at 10 AM. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, Hey, make sure you get your time in. I mean, these are very sensitive, emotional times and people Absolutely. need to feel that you care. So, you know, you know, HR, you know, this is only one piece of sustainability, but I think it's a big one. You know, David, why don't you talk about the evolving business model that we believe is necessary for a CPA firm to really be sustainable, you know, even in the event that this coronavirus pandemic didn't occur, changes that need to be made. Right. And so I think, you know, today's issues might <clears throat> accelerate this, but I don't think they've certainly created them. Um, or will really change the tra trajectory that we're on. So we really believe that CPAs have tremendous competitive advantages against many other service providers. And that is that they're called the most trusted advisor, right? And that many of their clients would rather buy more things from the most trusted advisor than from some stranger. So we believe that you know, CPA firms have to move into that more advisory type of service model that we're not talking to you about yesterday. We're helping you create the future that you want. So we believe it starts with what do you do and, and what is your company? And we believe companies that are stuck in that traditional, this is how we've done it for the last 30 years and this is how we're going to do it tomorrow are at tremendous risk because we know that there'll be firms that thrive and there'll be firms that try to survive, and that happens through every disruption. So we think that it needs to be more advisory services. It needs to be more referral partners where you can find the best in your community and start working on bringing business to the best in your communities. We also think from a staffing perspective that again, it's not your local market, it is the world, and so there could be things like integrity for your day-to-day -day and, and giving you additional support, but it's also about finding the expertise even at the highest level, not necessarily that sitting next door to you or even part of your firm, but in today's world, you can find the best and work with them on a as-needed basis 
So we believe that many of these firms can be sustainable, as Sean talked about earlier, changing that mindset. And we believe it's also changing that business model is the two key components uh, that will allow some of the firms to thrive into the future instead of just survive into the future. David, you know, everybody okay. said advisory services, advisory services, advisory services. And I believe some firms believe that they also are already doing advisory services because, hey, I'm consulting with my client. Give, give our listeners, you know, an idea. When you're talking about advisory services, what are some of the relationships or business advisory services that they could provide to their client base? And David... So that- David, before we get that going, we're going to have to kind of wrap up. We're right into end of our time here, gentlemen. So let's make these final comments and then we'll uh, have to call it a day. Wonderful. So I think that advisory services can be everything from in, introducing offshore staffing to your clients could be an advisory service. It could be traditional CPA type of services, R&D tax credit, cost sag. It could be helping your clients sell their business through uh, relationships with investment bankers or business brokers. It could be helping your clients secure their future by offering wealth management. You know, so I think that the, the list of potential opportunities in advisory services is almost unlimited. Sean? And before, before we end, Mike, uh, just a couple of points in the last one minute. And sure. you were talking about advisory services. Well, adding services is, 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 is the solution that we have talking about. And, and client accounting services coupled with offshore staffing. I mean, when you talk about advisory services, well, uh, you need that recurring revenue. And client accounting services gives you that recur- recurring revenue. And it is not just day-to-day bookkeeping and write-up. You, first of all, why I push CAS, the reason is recurring revenue you get access to all on all of their numbers. So they are dependent you on you for all kinds of advice you want, whether it's towards financial planning, tax planning, business or strategic planning. So it opens up all do- doors of advisory or business consulting that you want to do. And it's year and- round. You're touching your client yeah. every month, every year round month. work, you know, yes. no, no peaks and valleys. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I know one thing for sure, we have an affiliated company that uh, does fractional CFO services, and we've uh, had conversations with Integrity about helping to build a team, an offshore team, that's gonna be able to provide analysis so that companies that are hurting due to this coronavirus have the ability to take a look at their fixed costs and cash flow and you know, that's not CFO work, okay? So building that offshore team to help you with critical uh, uh, mission, uh, critical services in this time of crisis, uh, it's a tremendous business advisory <laughs> opportunity for all so, firms. So Mike, why don't you take us out of here? <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think we had a great conversation about uh, sustainability and a lot of different topics came up, which is very interesting and very helpful. Appreciate your time for uh, coming with us and joining us today. And that will be our uh, time to kind of wrap up our uh, session here and hope you all have a great week. And stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.